Hey guys, I'm back with another Endless Sky video. Um, as I said in my upload video, I wasn't able to actually capture any of the footage from the last time. But we actually left off in some time where we were in the previous stream, where um, a gunboat was chasing us, so... I think I did that quest accidentally twice, but... I mean, we can't do anything now, so... Alright, so right now we're on Glaze, and we have to leave. We have to try to get this gunboat off of us. Yeah, I switched my computer, so it's probably just gonna be kind of weird, because... Because of the tutorial system. Yeah, I'm gonna need a scram drive, maybe, who knows. Basically, a scram drive is that so that you don't have to like immediately drop off. I mean, like immediately stop to be able to hyper jump, but you can just like hyper jump midair. What am I talking about? Midair? You can always hyper jump midair, but uh, yeah, this is scram drive. I'm not sure where it exactly would be. Yeah, so I'm just gonna head over there and sort of try to lose the gunboat. My cargo ship will probably catch up afterwards. The, it's fine if it gets stranded because automatically it comes back. Oh wait, I'm actually at Junior Small, yeah. Let's just get this installed. Not sure, but I'm, I'm not sure about this, but I'm pretty sure, yeah, this eats up more, um, uh, this eats up one and a half, um, a hyperdrive um, fuel tanks, so that's a bit, a bit of a con. And that's pretty good. Oh, wait. Still following me. I'm gonna need a fuel pod, maybe. Who knows? Dang it, we can't lose it yet. I, I need to know where we could find fuel pods. Because that's probably the only way I'm gonna be able to lose a ship. So, wait, yeah, there's a fuel pod. I could probably get a fuel pod right here at the outfitter. So, I'm just gonna look it after. I'll be pretty useful. I'll be able to actually have three jumps now. Wait, let me see if I can lose it now. It'd be so good if I had a jump drive right now. Yes, I finally got away from it. Thank goodness. Alright. Let's see what we have to do. JJ meet to as soon as you land, and you pass off your information and photos to him. I'm not sure why it wasn't, why it wasn't in full screen at our time. Uh, and pass off your information and photos to him. He pays you 80k credits and says, I'll be sure to let the free world cancel, not how helpful you've been. Alright, spaceport. While well, you break through spaceport, you stop for a moment to read the menu po posted in front of the restaurant. When your thoughts are interrupted by the click of the gun, uh, raise my hand slowly into the air. Good choice. Now turn around slowly and don't try to find any business. I've got a semi automatic pistol pointed right at your head. Turn around slowly. You turn around and find yourself facing a woman in the free world in a uniform. The chevrons on her collar mark her as some sort of officer. She's grinning at you. Be equally done, Captain. Such restraint, such a remarkable level-headedness. Not something I often see around here. If this thing were loaded, quite a few, uh, uh, quite a few backcountry rooms in the last few months would have had their brains open before I could even get to around to recording them. She lowers the gun. All right. Uh, I mean, or not. I'm just gonna try it for kicks. Make grab the gun. Um, and then the, a second later, she got your arm twisted behind your back, using enough force to make it clear that things get really painful if you can do the struggle. Smart and playful, too. I like that. But it'll be a cold day in hell before a kid like you gets the drop on me. Now, shall we talk? She lets you go and shake your arm out gingerly. I need a civilian for some courier work. Nothing illegal, at least nothing the Republic can pin you, on you. It just needs to be done by a ship that is flying our colors and by a captain that is going to go to stream. Death tall tyrants and going with gun blazing is the first time your cargo gets scanned. What do you say? Ah, uh, okay. Tell me more. Okay, here's the deal. We need some cargo carried from Glory to Sky Mood. It's just medical supplies. No bombs, no contraband. But we'll load it onto your ship in the dead of night, trying our best to avoid any notice. But the reps have the sharpest eye in the galaxy. You'll get noticed anyways. And since anything done in the dead of night is likely to rouse your suspicions, why does it Dead of night? 
aren't aren't we dealing with multiple star systems? Isn't our night cycle like a standardized night cycle for the entire universe? Okay. Uh, you'll get bored and search. Meanwhile, the real cargo has been loaded on one to our on onto one of our ships in broad daylight, and we'll pass, pass through a public ship in space and time and us. All right. Great, grinning even more broadly. My name is Katia Reynolds, by the way. Glad to be working together. She starts to walk away and then seems to remember something. One last thing. Some friends of mine on Glory Taurus need to lift off that rock. And I, have, I owe them a favor. Would you mind saving two bucks for them? Sure, no problem. Alright. Here, let me just get rid of this scram drive because I don't really need it right now. Alright, uh, not sure if two people can even stay here, let me see. how much cargo, how much bunks do I have? Yeah, I have actually two bunks, so I can probably take them. Jeez. Alright, I'll be back right after this. Anyways, if you're going to, like, actually get the game, I would recommend the high DPI system, since the game is free and, um, it's also, uh, and it's D the DLC that with higher DPI is really good. And it's also free, so that's also pretty useful. Anyways, it feels so good to have a better fuel pod. Soon after you land, a male aged tourist couple approach you and ask if you'd be willing to take them to Sky Moon to see the dragons. Katarina recommended you. Wait, to see the dragons, Katarina recommended you. I'm not sure why I said it like that, but who knows. You tell them that you'd be glad to. The man who is wearing a floral pink shorts and wearing an absurdly large camera introduces himself as Marty. And this is my wife Sarah, he adds. Would you mind taking a picture of us? They pose in front of your ship. Better take two pictures in case she blinks, says Marty. As you help them bring their oversized suitcases on board, you can't help wondering what Katia would be friends with such a quintessential pair of rich, uncultured buffoons. Much later that night, as planned, three shadowy figures load a set of unmarked crates to anti our cargo bay. Katia assures you, assured you that the contents are harmless, just intended to distract the Republic's security officers, but you can't help feeling that you're know, getting involved in something shady. I mean, I've played through this before, it's not really... I'm not gonna give anything away, but... Yeah. It's a pretty interesting game, man. If you want to download, I'll put a link in the description. There's a lot of plot going on. It's actually not fully developed yet, but it's going on pretty well. There's multiple campaigns and stuff, multiple story modes you can do. And also, yeah, it's a pretty good game that I would recommend to anyone. When you land on a follower and open your sh ship's main hatch, you find yourself facing a Navy ops officer with several armed guards in tow. Sorry, Captain, but you've been selected for a random, random cargo screening. Alright, let him in. I let the officer and his companions into your cargo bay. They immediately zero in on the crates that were loaded up during the night. One of the guards writes quick sand and says no explosives, no radiation. The Navy officer says, would you mind telling us what's in these crates? You know, let just see, just some secret illegal things. I'm gonna try that and if it fails, um, I'm probably gonna marry you up. He laughs, sorry, you probably think you're just, we're just being paranoid, but rules are rules. Clearly he took what he said as a joke. He says, I'm afraid we're going to have to search these crates. The guards grab a couple of crowbars and begin prying the lids off them. The contents turn out to be re relatively inicious. Although one of the box, one, although one box full of scalpels and other surgical implements give them pause. As they open crate after crate without finding anything incriminating, you tell the officers getting more and more frustrated and uncomfortable. When the last crate turns out to contain more than a uh, Nothing more than bandages and gauze pads, his frustration turns to embarrassment. They repack the tray crates and nail the lids back on. I'm sorry, we must have been responding to a bad tip. I'm very sorry for the information of your privacy. Never mind, I know you're just doing your job. You're very gracious, Captain. We'll not detain you any longer. Alright, we'll leave. Alright, time to go all the way over there. I'll see you right when we get there. All right, we're here, so I'm gonna go check out if they're doing anything. You land on Skymo, but realize your escort carrying Marty, Sarah, and medical supplies hasn't entered the system yet. Better depart and wait for it to arrive, all right. 
land on Sky Moon before your engines have even had a chance to cool, Caddy comes aboard your ship. When she sees the passengers, she breaks into a wide grin. Lynn, she says, running up and hugging a woman who introduced herself as Sarah. Then she turned to, turns to Marty and says, And Henry, so good to see you, Captain Bloggs. Allow me to introduce professor, you to Professor Lynn Anderson, one of the galaxy's premier planetary scientists and her husband, Henry, a former Navy intelligence officer. Pleased to meet you both. Why the deception? Caddy explained, The Andersons are defecting to the free worlds. Their dream is to make terraforming a public service, supported by government funds, la rather than luxury available to only the richest of planets. We worked for years to get the Parliament to accept the idea, but with no luck. And because of Henry's background and knowledge about the intelligence community, the Republic would have stopped them if they knew they were defecting. She adds, The real secret cargo, which arrived several days ago via fast ship, was her personal possessions and Lynn's, ta Lynn's lab equipment and instruments, which were loaded onto ships supposedly bound for Hesha. Nice. We just rented a cottage there, saying we were downsizing. We'll, lo we'll lose a security deposit, of course, but gave us our excuse to pack up and move. Cuddy says you might not guess it from the outfit he's wearing, but Henry is an absolute mastermind at solely and misdirection. He planned the whole thing. She hands you a credit chip of 100k, that's pretty good. Thanks so much for your help. If you're willing to continue helping the free worlds, meet me in Spaceport Bar in half an hour. The thing is that once this once this thing starts, it really gets good. You have to like, get on that grind and get really good ships. When you enter the bar, Caddy or Wade you over to her table. I've got another friend who needs to be transported. This one is on a Boonduke planet near the core right now. Sure, I'll be glad to transport him. Great, his, eye, his name is Mr. Eyes, and we'll meet you on Foundry and Akinar uh, system. For safety, I'd rather not tell him anything about his work, but I'm sure he's an upstanding citizen. A little unpopular with big corporations and certain corrupt local governments, though, so, alright. Let's see where it is. He's out of there. He's in the syndicate, and. The syndicate kind of, and they have pretty good ships though. What I really want to do is and try to buy their Osprey ship because that one's a really good ship. It travels really, really fast and it's a pretty good warship. It's really fun when you get into later parts of the game. At that point, you're not just grinding, you're like really, you're getting a lot of money. You're also spending a lot of money and that's one of the problems, but. Eh. I gotta spend money to make some. Soon I'm probably gonna try to explore the entire like Republic space. Because right now we're only in Republic space, there's no like out branchings or anything. As right now, but you guys will see soon, it's really interesting. As soon as you land and open your ship's hatch, a man wearing sunglasses and a ridiculous hat carrying a male suitcase runs past you and into your ship, casting a quick furtive glance behind him to see if anyone's following. Quickly shut the hatch to find out if he's okay. You shut the hatch to keep anyone else from boarding your ship and then turn around to find out who your visitor is. My name is Arkee. How can I help you? I'm Eyes Springborn, pronouncing the name like Eyes. He takes off the glasses and hat. Council Reynolds told me to meet you here. Wait, Council Reynolds? You mean Katia, Katia is in the parliament? He looks genuinely shocked. You didn't know? That woman is a legend. The two terms representing the dirt belt. Defender of the small worlds and the common people. In some circles, her work has made almost uh, make, made her almost as unpopular as me. But she got tired of working for reform and decided to create her own government instead. And what do you do for work, you ask? Vigilante nuclear power plant inspector, she said nonchalantly. Uh, alright. I go from world to world checking out planet, planet emissions to see if they're leaking isotopes into the air, the sea, or the groundwater. And if they are, I sick the Department of the Atomic Safety on them. The Syndicate hates my guts right now. So, what has Katia asked you to do for Free Worlds? Isn't it obvious? We're going to hunt down certain 90 people who have been developing nuclear weapons. And the Free Worlds will turn them over to the Republic. Then the Republic will know that the Free Worlds weren't behind the attacks, and we'll stop this whole mess before it devolves into civil war. So you're convinced that the Free Worlds are innocent, alright? Absolutely. It makes no sense. First of all, the attack hurt their cause more than it helped it. And second, I've known Katarina and her friends since the coalition and the coalition for a long time. There's no way they were to agree to such a thing. 
So whoever spots a little out there and the free worlds will bring it to justice. All right, what's our plan? First, we need to go out to Geminis, where the attack happened. I can explain more when we get here in the meantime, but in the meantime, I should warn you that I also seem like I have terrible luck with pirates showing up wherever I go. It's almost like someone has put a price on my head. Alright, doesn't seem good when you have a bounty on your head. 